Hi, this video is a thermostat replacement DIY step-by-step -step on a W212, which is a Mercedes-Benz E350 model years 2010 to 2016. If you have a engine check light and the OBD2 reads P0128, in general, that it is the thermostat and it needs to be replaced. What you will need is a 17 millimeter socket for the belt tensioner, a Torx E14 for the belt idle pulley, a Torx E10 for the thermostat. And remember, the torque spec for the thermostat is 18 feet pounds or 25 newton meters. And for the idle pulley is 18 feet pounds or 25 newton meters. You also need a screwdriver and antifreeze for topping off. So before we go into the video, let's get familiar with some of the components. The smog pump is actually mounted on rubber and it will shift a little bit if you pull it up and you can fit in a E10 Torx 10 for the thermostat. And then the idle pulley is in the way of the second bolt underneath the thermostat that needs to be removed. And then the tensioner, if you rotate the tensioner counterclockwise, you can loosen the belt. And without removing the entire belt, just leave it where it is. It will sag enough for you to pull out the pulley and save you some time in the process. For those of you who don't have too much time to raise the car, pull the belly pan off, and drain the fluid out of the radiator, which will save you about another hour, then you can do it my way. Just pull the thermostat, which you will lose about half a gallon of coolant and water mix, which you can just top off later. But just do remember to put a catch pan underneath the car that fluid will come out. I replaced the thermostat without lifting or jacking up the car. It'll save you about an hour of time. First, you look at the position of the smog pump. You can lift it out of the way. It's mounted on rubber bushings. It'll lift this just so slightly and you have access to the 10 millimeter Torx or the E10 back there, which is a little hard to see, but you can see it hiding back there. With a small drive wrench, you can get access if you're not using a 5.8. And the next thing I did is I mark the belt and then I left it where it was. And that is the idle pulley. And down there, that is the belt tensioner. And here's the belt tensioner mounted on the 17 millimeter uh, tension block. Rotate counterclockwise. So once you loosen the belt from the tensioner, you have you can remove the idle pulley with an E14. And then you can get a screwdriver, that retainer ring, you can pull it out downwards and slide out the hose. And once you have those off, you can see the two bolts, the E10 mounting to the thermostat housing. A lot of coolant will come out once you loosen the thermostat, put a catch pan underneath the car and also have a rag ready when you have the thermostat out. I lost about half a gallon of antifreeze with water mix. And then when you do put the thermostat back on, apply a little bit of oil to the O-rings. It'll slide in quite easily that way. And when you do put back the torque bolts onto the housing, remember to use 18 feet pounds or 25 newton meters. 
and that goes the same with the idle pulley. And again, first you can lift the smog pump out of the way, use a small drive E10 to get it in there. So if it's hard to reference, you can just look at your part and you find the second placement of the torque, uh, E10 torque bolt. And there is a connector that is connected to the thermostat, which is kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it right there. It's really hard for me to get the right camera angle. And the clip has a gray tab, which you just pull it back and slide off. And the trick is leave the wire and everything on the thermostat after you pull the pump out, then you can remove the connector. And the same thing as reverse when you, you, you would put the connector back on the thermostat before you slip it back into the engine. So the entire job took me about an hour and 15 minutes. You can see that connector right there. It has a gray tab. Basically, you just pull it back or slide it back. And then you can remove that connector from the thermostat easily. By the way, it is best to use OEM parts for the thermostat and as well as the antifreeze to save yourself potential headaches once you start the job. And thank you very much for watching.